Brew McCoy has been ruled eligible at Tennessee. Now, if you've kept up with this story at all, it's a fascinating one. Brew McCoy has committed a lot of different places, was at Texas for a minute, ultimately ended up playing at USC. We're not going to get into the reasoning too much, but bottom line, transfers to Tennessee, and the whole question mark was, okay, he, he transferred, but will he be eligible by the season? There was some weird song and dance going on with USC needs to sign this waiver. Well, now it's the NCAA's decision. Whose decision is it? Okay, it's on the NCAA now. They found out finally, okay, we're going to have Brew McCoy for our season opener against Ball State. And Brew McCoy, a guy who has tons of ability, was recruited as, I believe he was a five-star coming out of high school. I believe he was um, a guy who played, I mean, I know he's a guy who played both ways. He might even, I want to say he was one of the players of the year in the state of California. Don't quote me on that. But Brew McCoy, a guy who played linebacker, who played receiver, ultimately translates to receiver at the next level. And he's a guy that I think they're going to have to lean on at least a little bit at Tennessee. And it's a big deal that you get him this coming year at receiver because you lose a guy to the NFL like Bayless Jones. And we talk so much about Tennessee winning 10 games, winning nine games. I mean, you see different people in the media talking about them potentially playing spoiler against Alabama and all this, that, and the other. Well, if that's going to happen, Tennessee has got to score a lot of points and be as advertised on offense. Defense has to keep up their end of the deal. You hope, pray, and wish that they're going to end up being enough to, to get Tennessee to where they want to be defensively, but... All that's to say, whatever the defense does, the offense needs to be the strength of this football team while you're waiting on that defense to get it together. And losing a guy like Bayless Jones leaves a fair amount of production to be desired or to be, I mean, to, to be fulfilled, if you will. 807 yards for Bayless Jones a season ago. Hendon Hooker threw for about just a shade under 3,000. So almost 25% of his yards that he was throwing for was to a receiver that's no longer on the roster. So entering Brew McCoy, a guy who is freakishly talented, a guy who is really highly recruited like we talked about, but really we haven't seen him put it together for a full season just yet. A guy who we're still waiting for him to have that aha light bulb moment. And Josh Heupel's offense, really quarterback friendly, really wide receiver friendly, really production friendly for both those parties. This could be the situation where he does it. But for Tennessee to get to where they want to go, I've said it before on this show, you got to have more than just Cedric Tillman. You got to have more than just wide receiver one because he is a phenomenal talent. There's going to be games where he takes over and he just is winning his matchup. He's beating that DB like a drum. It's game over for everybody else because Cedric Tillman has the game of his life that night. That might be the case some nights. However, they're going to play some of this stiffer competition And they're going to play some defensive coordinators that say, you know what? If you beat us, it's not going to be with Cedric Tillman. If you beat us, it's not going to be with him. We're just going to take him away, beat us some other way. If you win some other way, so be it. But it's not going to be with Tillman. Obviously, you bring back your leading rusher from a year ago and Jabari Small. But you look at these teams that make the deep runs into the post, not postseason so much, but I mean, we'll talk about postseason college football playoff. Alabama last year had Jamison Williams, had John Mechie. John Mechie obviously getting hurt in the SEC title game, but what happened when they lost their deep threat in Jamison Williams in that national title game? Alabama lost their vertical presence. They had one wide receiver to go to. They no longer have that. They became virtually one-dimensional. That can't be Tennessee's story because there's going to be times where they take away Cedric Tillman. So going back to that example with Alabama, if they had had John Mechie in that title game, well, then it goes back to, okay, I know Jamison Williams got hurt in that title game, so maybe this is a poor example in general, but having two wide receivers for Alabama would have changed the game. For Tennessee, having two wide receivers will change the game. Having two options that you have to honor in the pass game is going to be crucial for them to get to where they're capable of going. Because Hendon Hooker is eyeing a dark horse Heisman Trophy run, Tennessee is eyeing a dark horse SEC title appearance. Talk about that as you want to talk about that. But if they're going to do that, they're going to ask Brew McCoy to be productive. They're going to ask him to pick up some of that production that Bayless Jones ultimately left behind. And so I think the thesis here is, 
Got to be able to spread the ball around. Cedric Tillman's great. Jabari Small is great. Brew McCoy, got to be able to spread the ball around. So the best case scenario for Brew McCoy is he surpasses that production, right? Let's say he puts it together with his physical ability. They go over 1,000 yards receiving for him, and Cedric Tillman has his own 1,000 yards receiving, and they find a way to surpass everybody's expectations, and they do big things, and everyone's happy in, in Knoxville. I think, fortunately for Tennessee, I think the floor is still relatively high for Brew McCoy. At the very least, you have someone who's going to be marginally productive. Maybe he has a three, 400-yard season. Even less than that, he's going to be somebody that adds physicality to the outside. When you throw those bubble screens, when you throw those swing routes to your running back and get them in space, you have a guy who, again, was formerly a linebacker at the high school level, was recruited really highly as a linebacker, and he's now playing receiver for you. He can bully some of these DBs. We had some people out at the Tennessee uh, scrimmage this past fall camp, and they talked about, yeah, Brew McCoy's still a work in progress. He's still probably getting his feet underneath him. But, boy, he was bullying some of those DBs physically. At the very least, that's what he brings to the table for Tennessee. So, again, Brew McCoy has got to be a guy for them. they got to have somebody else pick up the production for them at Tennessee to get to where they want to go, to get Hennon Hooker to where he wants to go. It doesn't have to just be Brew McCoy, but he has to be an option for them. Have to have a solid wide receiver too for Tennessee because they have a lot of things in front of them. There's a lot of excitement in the Hypo era. Brew McCoy, got to be a piece, but again, he is eligible for Tennessee and that's big news. That's good news for everybody in Knoxville. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.